On this channel, we've often spoken about how to grow your website. And we've covered topics from migration, kind of from other platforms to Webflow, comparing Webflow to other platforms, and even increasing the conversions and the growth of your website. And we've mentioned all of these important aspects, but we did not cover probably one of the most important ones, and that is a website audit. And that's why in this video, I'll be showcasing what is a website audit, how can you do it yourself, and just give a few examples of why you should continuously be auditing your website and what results are we getting for our clients with those website audits. So let's get started. Before jumping into the video, my name is Orosh and I'm the founder and CEO at Flow Ninja. And over the past years, we had a chance to work on more than 150 to 200 websites for some of the most leading enterprises around the world like Upwork.com. And even though many of these websites that we built over the years have been in different sizes, different industries, different scales of the websites from scale ups, startups to enterprises, all of them have one thing which is in common with all of those websites and that is that every single one of them required a website audit. So what is a website audit after all? I mean, to take a step back, your website should be the bridge between you and your customers. And even if you have a really pretty website or even a website which has a lot of traffic coming to the website itself, you might not be converting those visitors properly and in the process, you might not generate enough revenue from your marketing website. So that's why in this video, I'll go over the main things you need to take care of when doing a website audit yourself. I mean, depending on the size of the company, the size of the product, it can be like a few months of work actually to go ahead and do a proper website audit. But to keep this video short and to kind of ensure that we give just the top high level overviews of things you should take care of, I'm gonna be going ahead and showcasing you the page performance scan. I'm gonna be showcasing you how to do a technical SEO and keyword research, how to go ahead and audit your website architecture and sitemap, how to go ahead and create a good user journey and create an actual sales funnel out of your website. And finally, how to see what your competitors editors are doing and find inspiration from that for your own. The first part is going to be page performance scan. And the thing I had the most personally is waiting in lines. Just because even if I go ahead and visit the top Michelin starred restaurant, if I'm going to be waiting on my food for 45 minutes to an hour, it doesn't matter how good the food is. I'm going to get away from that place frustrated and annoyed by the customer service and by the time it took me to get my food to my plate and in front of my mouth. And if we compare that to the website, it's probably gonna be pretty similar. I know a lot of agencies which are pushing kind of really fancy designs, really fancy interactions and adding more and more things which are just gonna be slowing down the website and which are gonna create a bad user experience for a lot of the users which might not have like the best devices, which might not have good internet connection at the time of them actually loading the website up. And in the process, that's probably gonna result in those customers leaving the website and leaving the website not satisfied with the experience. And I'm not talking about this just from a personal perspective. We had a client which was spending uh, 100 and 150K on ads every single month. And by them just optimizing their page speed, it allowed them to get a better ROI by upwards of 30% on all the ad spend they were pl placing on the website. And that's with a simple change and with a simple update to the website. And that's to make it load a lot faster than it was loading previously. Now that we know that website speed is really important, how can you actually track this website speed and how to know is your website performant. There are multiple tools you can use. The one I like personally the most is tool.pingdom.com just because it's going to give me the best possible score for my website which is going to be consistent. On the other side you also have GT Metrics which became paid pretty recently. You can use, use Google's speed test for websites and soon we're also going to be launching a new feature on our DataGo app platform which is going to allow you to go ahead and track every single one of your pages and the speed of every single one of your pages in order to ensure that they're running in the best best way possible. By leveraging these tools, you're going to be able to see the speed of every single one of your website pages and to monitor whether you're making improvements or whether you need to continue working on your website speed. Step two is going to be technical SEO and strategy. If you invest in your like technical SEO, in your SEO strategy, in your content and in general in your website from a strategic SEO perspective, you're going to be continuously getting free traffic, free leads and in the end free customers directly from Google to your website without paying a penny. And all that sounds really really fun but in order to get to that point you need a really good SEO strategy you need a good platform 
and you need to ensure that everything is set up properly from the technical side. And this is a huge topic that I don't want to get uh, really, really in depth to uh, in this video, but I can give you a few tips on what should you do when you go ahead and take a look at your website or your client's websites from a technical SEO standpoint. First, of course, is the SEO strategy. How I like to look at the SEO strategy is you're either going to go ahead and create long tail SEO keywords, which are probably going to be a lot easier to rank for. I mean, we usually position that where, for example, for, even for our website, we're going to be writing blogs about long tail keywords. Before somebody finds out that they need Webflow, they're probably going to be searching for the best CMS platform in 2024. So we can start creating content, which is first Google search from a like VP of marketing or whatever, when they start considering a website migration. And based off of that, they, they're going to be able to see our content on every single page on Google. And by the time when they are kind of ready to buy, they're going to be able to go ahead and see our transactional keyword and actually buy from our brand. And it's really important for you to go ahead and think about SEO on that kind of long tail basis. And that you don't think about SEO as a transactional keyword where somebody's going to type in the best Webflow agency and you're going to kind of pop up on the top. And it's going to be similar in B2B, in B2C or in any other industries. Then. We're gonna go ahead and see if the website is set up properly on the technical SEO side. This is gonna help Google recognize your website a little bit better. It's probably not gonna give you huge SEO spikes if you don't have good content on the back end, but it's important to understand whether your SEO titles are set up properly, descriptions, where kind of all text for images is set up properly, heading hierarchy is set up properly. If you wanna add schema, has that been set up properly? Do you have a sitemap? How do you publish that sitemap? Do you have Google Search Console added to the website? And just all those technical stuff and technical aspects of the website which needs to be met in order for a website to perform really, really well. And finally, is to go ahead and create a keyword research. This is still not going to be a full kind of SEO strategy, a comprehensive SEO strategy, but you can go ahead and research your market and just try to identify what are the keyword gaps, what's your competition doing, and kind of just to try to identify is the content that you've been publishing actually good or does it make sense for that content to rank long term? And then finally, of course, just doing an SEO audit just to figure out how much SEO traffic is the website getting? Is it getting any SEO traffic? Is it going up and down? Have maybe some of the recent changes of the website made the website to have more traffic or made the website to have less traffic. So we can double down on those and either create more of the content which is performing well or to figure out what actually broke the website and fix it long term. And when it comes to the tools, you're going to want to use probably like SEMrush. It's one of the most popular tools. But if you don't have a budget for something like that, you can do a really quick and easy search with spyfu.com, which is a free tool which is going to allow you to go ahead and get a little bit of an overview of your website and of course also of your competitors and what they're doing from their own side. On top of that, you're going to have like, of course, the Google Search Console. And you're going to want to ensure that your website has the Search Console installed and that you can dig into the Search Console to identify for any problems. And the final tool is going to be Answer the Public just because I do strongly believe it's a great tool to give you ideas on those kind of long tail SEO keywords and to help you to create a, the best possible SEO strategy for your website. Step three is gonna be the website architecture and sitemap. You need to think about your website as your digital storefront. You want your customers to know everything about your brand, about your service, and about your business before they book a sales call. And, or even before they kind of go ahead and sign up for the platform if you don't have like a sales process of, of that sort for your business. And you want them to be raving about your product and to understand everything your product offers just by visiting the pages on your website and also for them to be able to relate to the product and get a feeling like this product was created specifically for them. And in order to do that, you're going to need to have a really good sitemap and a really good website architecture set up. We're always going to be auditing all the websites just to see do they have proper case studies? How have the case studies been set up? Do they have like a good uh, get a demo page? Do they have a blog set up already? Do they have lead magnets? Do they have credibility set up in the proper way? Do they have industry specific pages? Is, kind of which industries they are catering. In general, just to try to create an, a good a high level overview of your website sitemap, create it in a visual way, and just try to see what are the additional questions that our customers are going to have and how can we answer every single one of those questions on our website. Step four is going to be the user journey and sales funnel. And as mentioned previously, I, I guess we all know that I really like nice food. And if you come to a really good restaurant for the first time, they're going to be treating you in a completely different way than if you come to the 
the restaurant every single week. For example, if you're at a restaurant for the first time, they might talk about like the founder's history, kind of if it's a family run kind of restaurant, how do they prepare food? Where do they gather all the food? And just try to kind of create a brand story around that restaurant so that you feel special and that you really understand the backstory of that restaurant and why is it actually that good. And if you start going to the restaurant really, really often, they're probably gonna start treating you in a different way. They might offer different cuisines, which are special for that week or that, which they think you would like based on what, everything you were kind of buying previously. And in general, they're gonna create a different experience and they're probably not gonna get back to the restaurant history after all, because if you're a new customer, you're gonna require one sales process. And if you're an existing customer, you're gonna require a different sales process. And if you apply the same logic to your marketing website, you're gonna wanna understand where do your customers come from and how do you wanna create their experience to be when they uh, can attach your website in different touch points. So if you're running paid, you want one user journey for that. If people are coming from blogs, you wanna have a different user journey for that. If people already know your brand and they're directly typing in the kind of flow ninja on, the, on their browser, you wanna have a different user journey for that. So just try to identify where do all the customers come from, where do you wanna push them to, and how can you create the best possible kind of sales model and like a sales methodology around your website in order to ensure that those customers are actually converting in the proper way. And as a bonus tip, you're gonna wanna go ahead and kind of do an audit of your competitors' websites as well. As everybody says that good artists kind of copy and the best artists steal, you're gonna wanna do something similar when you're building your website. Of course, we're not gonna be stealing stuff that our competition is doing, but we just wanna figure out what actually works in our industry, what actually works uh, kind of for websites which are similar size to ours, and just to see how can we be different and how can we approach a similar thing with a new creative idea in order to showcase that if our customer is comparing uh, one website to our website, that our website in the end looks like a better solution, that our business looks like a winner for kind of the Blah, 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 blah. So by doing the market analysis and kind of competitors research, we're gonna be able to identify which things can our competitors have and to position our website in a better way so that when a customer sees both of our websites, they think we're a stronger choice and they decide to go with our business in the end. And again, you can use the SpyFu tool to go ahead and kind of see which are the, your main competitors and what they're doing on their website and which ideas you can maybe steal just a little bit. And to conclude, just getting back to the topic of why it's actually really important to do a website audit before starting to do any website work. I mean, previously we had physical stores, which took years and years to build and kind of physical locations before the internet world took a lot of time and a lot of effort to, to be built properly and to ensure the best customer experience. And it should not be any different when you're building your own marketing website. So that's why I strongly suggest that before committing to any actual work, you do the audit of everything you currently have and to create a step-by-step -step process of how you actually plan to attack the website and how you plan to continuously improve it and get the most out of it. And to hear all of this in a lot more in depth, because I, I just kind of went over this really, really quickly, you can see our video of how to make $1.7 million from your website here, where we're gonna be going into a lot more details on this topic. And at the end of the video, you're gonna be also able to get a free website audit for yourself.